Welcome to another episode of the Dose of Leadership podcast, the show that brings you inspiring and educational interviews with today's most relevant and motivating leaders. Each episode is dedicated to highlight real-life leadership and influence experts who dedicate their lives to the pursuit of the truth, common sense, and courageous leadership. And now, here's your host, Richard Ryerson. Hey, welcome to Dose of Leadership. Welcome to the first episode of 2020. So excited to kick off the brand new decade and entering our seventh year at Dose of Leadership, which is just amazing to me that it's been that long. It's gone by so fast and it's really a blessing. It's one of my favorite things to do and I get to talk to so many guests. I feel like I've received a PhD in life, leadership, and so much wisdom out there. And I can't think of a better guest to kick off 2020. He certainly lives up to all those expectations. Such a fun conversation. I feel so blessed to have met Tom Triumph. I love that last name. It's so fitting to what he believes, what he stands for, what he likes to educate people on. He is a speaker, a consultant, and an author who helps companies grow by working with them, innovate their business and product development. He's helped many organizations, large and small. He helps them act nimbly, helps small companies scale. He's been a a participant in two global technology revolutions. He's been part of some remarkable success stories and some misfires as well. He's lived aboard an ocean research ship and tended to the mini-sub where Cousteau was on board, which is pretty cool. He wrestled in the Olympic trials, and he's helped oversee the redesign and fabrication of the largest composite hovercraft ever built in the U.S. He's got a life stink, a lot of life stink on him, a lot of life experiences. He talks a lot about it in his brand new book, Evolve or Die, Lessons for World-Class Innovation and Creativity, which I just absolutely love this book. It's one of those books you can pull off the shelf, turn anywhere in the book, and it's chock full of stories, chock full of wisdom. He's one of those guys that believes we were all destined for great things and that we're all born these creative geniuses and and it's all of it's inside of us. You've heard me talk about this on the show many times that it's not about trying to become a better leader or a better anything. It's about releasing what's already inside of you. And Tom believes that wholeheartedly. And uh, we talk a, a lot about life, leadership, some of the lessons, so many great stories. He's got a great TED Talk out there, one of the bed TED Talks out there. I'll have a link to it on the post. You can catch it at Dose of Leadership. And he's a big giver. I've never had anybody in the show do this, and this is so special, so unique. And I just think it's a great way to kick off 2020 as I just, I'm so excited for where Dose of Leadership is going this year. So many great guests coming down the pike. And Tom is so generous. And I want to repeat this a couple times in here, and it'll be in the show notes on doseofleadership.com on Tom's uh, episode. But if you can write this down, grab a pen, and any listener out there, you can instantly receive his 52-page four-color ebook called The Call to Innovate. All you got to do is text EVOLVE, that's E-V-O-L-V-E, EVOLVE to 444-999. So that's text EVOLVE to 444-999. This is a $10 book on Amazon. You'll get it for free. You can also get an additional bonus if you text Evolve. You'll also automatically receive, I'm not, I'm, I'm not even going to name the book, but if you, it's, this is my favorite author. You've heard me talk about it many times on this show. One of my favorite authors, he was a Marine, gives you a hint. He's got some of the best books out there. I give it to all my coaching clients. The first, uh, not this book that he's given, but this author, I use his book for all my coaching clients when I start out with him. He's going to give this book in addition to you as well if you text EVOLVE to 444-999. He's going to mail this book to you. And so two great gifts from such a generous guy, such a generous thought leader. He's one of the great ones out there. And I'm really excited to, to have this conversation or have you listen to this conversation. One of the great ones out there, Tom Triumph. So exciting. This show is sponsored, again, by my sponsor, Equity Bank. So thrilled to have them part of this show. They've been with me for an, a year and a half now. We're still going strong, heading to their leadership conference here in a couple of weeks to help MC their annual leadership conference up in Kansas City. And Equity Bank is just one of those organizations that understands what it means to start and grow a business. They're one of the unique financial institutions out there. Been exciting to watch them grow in my hometown. They've grown into one of the fastest growing banks in the Midwest. They're listed on the NASDAQ exchange. They have locations all across Kansas, as well as Oklahoma, Missouri, and Arkansas. Clearly, I truly believe that this team at Equity Bank knows how to lead for growth. So if it feels like your current bank is more of a follower than a leader, then check out my friends at equitybank.com. You're going to want to work with them. Thanks for listening to the show. Thanks for all your support. Here's to a great 2020 for all of you out there. Now let's join our conversation with the one and only Tom Triumph here on Dose of Leadership. Well, good morning, Tom Triumph. Welcome to the show. Good morning, Richard. You know, is your last name really Triumph? Is that real? 
Yes, that is the, that's my real name. My, my grandparents immigrated from Italy and the name, it used to be Triumpho, but the O was cut off during. Oh man, what a shame. During the, yeah. The mighty yeah. Triumpho. I would love to call you that. Yeah. The mighty, what so. a perfect name. <laughs> the reason why I, I'm giving you the business about that, because what a perfect name for this book is I'm reading your book and, and the stuff that you talk about. I mean, Triumph is like, you're destined to talk about the things you talk about. Have you ever yeah. thought about that? No, I've not thought about that. I, I, I think, um, yeah. I mean, I don't know that it's any better than anybody else's last name. <laughs> well, it's, it's, that it, it's, it's honestly, it's whatever you make your name to be. I mean, you know, uh, it, it could be good or bad. <laughs> well, great, uh, great answer from a, a, a the, the humility is 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 great and and indicative of a a great and humble leader that you are. But I mean, the stuff you're talking about and in, in getting people to, you know, tap into their creativity to their, the, the innovative side of their brains. I got to tell you, the, uh, we talked a little bit about this in the pre-recording is I never really saw myself as someone who was creative or innovative. I, that, right. uh, that limiting belief, I guess, kind of kept me away from it. Doing this show, you know, and I'm just turned 51. And so in the last eight to 10 years, I've started to see that I'm, I have a lot more creative potential than I gave myself credit for. For the most of my life, I was talking myself out of it. Is, is, do you find that normal in people? Yeah. I mean, here, here's, here's how I think about it, right? Um, th there's, there's a quote from Bill Bowerman, right? The, the, the famous coach and a co-founder of Nike. And he, and he said, if you have a body, you are an athlete. And I really believe that. And, and other, other people have said similar things. There's a, a famous uh, runner and, and uh, a medical doctor, uh, George Sheehan, who said everyone w with with a, with a body is 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 a runner, right? So I, I think it's the same thing. I mean, if you are a human, you are creative, and you have the capacity that can be used, it can be developed, and can be increased, right? But it but everybody is born a creative genius. And actually we can talk about it a little bit later. There's, there's a study that shows that I talk about it in, in the TEDx talk and, and I can just summarize it very quickly for you here. When NASA was getting started, when NASA was ramping up, they wanted to find, identify their most creative employees in their organization. And you would imagine that NASA to begin with has a lot of very bright people. Well, they hired a consultant uh, to come in and, and actually put together a test. His name is George Land. And George Land put together a simple assessment to measure someone's creativity. And they applied it to all their employees within NASA, not just their engineers, but their scientists and even their administrative people and project managers and whatnot. And they found that approximately 2% of their employees scored at the creative genius level. And it worked out great, right? Yeah. NASA. Once identified, NASA used these folks and put them in positions of where, the, where their creativity could be applied. And it helped us land on the moon and return safely back to Earth just seven years after getting started. Yeah. And then and quick cut to the end. Decades later, decades later, George Land, he's been retired and he's invited to visit his granddaughter's kindergarten class just to come meet with the kids. And he decides really on a whim to bring the same assessment used at NASA just for fun and have the kids take the test. Five-year-old kids, he was shocked to find that 98% scored at the creative genius level. Oh, my Lord. He goes back five years later when the kids were 10, same group of kids, had them take it, 30% scored. He went back five years later when the kids were 15, same kids, 12%. And he joked. He goes, yeah, we stopped testing at 15 years of age because the results were so depressing. <laughs> right. um, yeah. And, and, it, and it's been repeated many times by others, always with the same results. So believe me, you are, whether you believe it or not, you were born a creative genius, at least 98% of us were. Um, and, and you're doing yourself a disservice and anyone's doing themselves a disservice to, to simply say, yeah, I'm not a creative person. You know, that is an amazing story, but it is, it is depressing. And you think back oh, how much, is getting lost and why is it getting lost, right? I mean, I think intuitively we can see why it gets stymied, but why do you think it? I mean, what? how do we prevent that? How do we stop that? Or how do we well, re reinvigorate it's, it? 
<laughs> it, 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 it's it's very understandable, right? Because we all get caught up, right? Like they say, the, in the thick of thin things, right? We get <laughs> right, caught up. Right. We get caught up, and I'm as I'm as guilty of it as anybody. We just get very very busy, and our lives get filled with just trying to keep the wheels on things, um, and it it's hard it, it's hard to find the time to. To, to be creative. I, I, I recently gave a TEDx talk up in Cape May, New Jersey, and um, it, it's up. Folks can watch it. And I actually talk about this exact story for just a few minutes about the NASA and George Land. But the interesting part is George Land went on to describe that anyone can regain their creative genius and you can do it readily and you can do it quickly. And very quickly, there's basically three things that we, we could all practice, even right now in our in our busy lives, right? The first one is to generate an abundance of ideas. Yeah. Okay. The second thing is to withhold criticism. Mm. And the third thing is exercise every day your creativity. And those those three things can really help get us back on the path to uh, to, to regaining our creative capacity. I like the criticism piece. I think, you know, and it's so, it's one of those, um, it's almost like eating a chocolate donut or pizza. Criticism is like that, that sugar high that makes you feel like you're accomplishing something, right? But they're empty calories and it, and it actually leads to, to a, a dark path, right? I've, I've always believed that, uh, yet I still find myself going down that rabbit hole, particularly in this environment, right? In, or well, the, the internet age, it's easy to, to fall into that trap. It seems like things, things. It seems like people have become as critical as they've ever been, um, and and I don't think that's serving anybody very well. I mean, there's such a thing as constructive criticism, right? Which which we all should be open to, which is trying to objectively understand where where we can make improvements, right? Right. And and that's fine. And and, and then there's just criticism that originates from anger and angst and frustration that's really I intended to uh, de de degrade the person. And, and that's not good because that doesn't help anybody. You know, I had a great mentor. She since passed away. She was, a, she was actually an, uh, an acting coach here in town, but she was, she would help me with my public speaking and, and even generating some of my business, like a very innovative, very creative person, very passionate about life. And I remember we were getting ready to, she was with me as I was giving one of my keynotes. And after it was over, it went, it went really well. I mean, and, and she helped me through a lot of, of on the improvement side and it went really right. well. And, you know, after the speech and people coming up and saying, hey, really a great speech. I love it, which is always great, right? You're basking in the warmth of your your success or whatever. And, and yeah. the guy comes up and says the same thing. He said, Hey, you know, great speech. He goes, but here's some pointers I'd like to give to you. And he went about and he gave them and I'm like, Oh yeah. And I'm sitting there thinking, no, this is, you know, constructive criticism is not. And my teacher, after it was over, she was like, you know, F that guy, you know, and <clears throat> don't. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Really? But it's, it's just to make me better. She's like, no, there, there's a difference. Right. And anybody that comes up would give you unsolicited advice. That was her big pet peeve as an artist, as a creative is like, that's only going to make you focus on your weakness. She goes, I want you to focus on your strengths. You knock this out of the park. That guy was doing that because he didn't feel good about himself. And I thought that was a, a great lesson from her. Um, what do you think about when you hear me say that story? Well, I think that, I mean, I think that could be true. She might have a point, but on the other hand, he might've had some great insights that, that you that you felt were very helpful and would help you give a better talk next time, right? And and in the end, you know, I wouldn't say you know, yeah. f you to the guy. I mean, it would be like, okay, I mean, take, yeah, take, I wouldn't take, say it. Right. You, well, I don't mean that uh, you know, literally. I just mean even think that. I here's what I would think. I'd say, great, thanks. And, and then you, it's up to you to take what you what you can that is going to help you deliver a more impactful, meaningful, relevant talk, right? And if there are things from what he told you that apply, great, use it. If there's not, that's fine. I mean, then Yeah, I agree with you. And I know what you're saying. I, I guess it's what she was trying to get me to avoid was kind of like the, I remember hearing a story about, um, oh, who's the guy that helped create Seinfeld and Kirby Enthusiasm, 
guy. Yeah, Larry David. Larry David. In the famous story that he had, he was getting acknowledged at a New York Yankees game, you know, the seventh inning stretch or whatever, you know, acknowledged. And, you know, of course, he's a big New York guy and a Yankees fan. And, and the crowd's just going nuts. And he gets this a little ward at the seventh inning stretch. And then he's walking out and he goes, you know, as he's walking through the <laughs> tunnel, one guy yells over, you suck, Larry David, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and that's all he thought. It ruined his whole night. And that's all he thought about. Right. And so it's just, you know, just getting glomming on that one little piece of criticism, I guess. And, and, and that's not funny. Rudy. Other, yeah. And other than that, he probably said other than that, it was pretty, pretty. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. What a great yeah. show. Hey, look, there's, I, I guess, you know, there's always going to be, haters right it's sure. a common vernacular um and whatever i mean i mean just just you know you you do you right you right. you 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 do yourself and um you know work hard be humble do good work keep learning and i i'm not sure if the criticism really matters that much yeah it does i mean it's kind of like you know, that's what I like in your book when you talk about <clears throat> that short little chapter about rules for creating your future from a rock star. I'm a big Steve Vai fan, and you had the oh, the, great. The, the list from Steve Vai, right? And he talks about not so much the criticism, but you know, he does talk about the focus on your strengths piece. And I'm a huge believer of that. I, I've seen that work in real time in real life, both when I was uh, when I'm accountable for people, but even for myself, as in when and I, my life really started to turn around when I started doing that. When I'm, I, I'm aware of my weaknesses, but to me, I'm, I'm an eighty. I do the eighty twenty Pareto rule, right? I spend eighty percent of my time on my strengths and twenty percent of my time on my weaknesses. I don't ignore them necessarily, but I don't try to to, to spend all my energy trying to fix a weakness that, in the grand scheme of things, is really not going to move the needle all that much. If even if I did improve, right? And so that's why I, I love the Steve Vai list, you know, focus on your strengths. Don't worry about what you might be missing. Yeah. All of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, and the, the one thing you get, I mean, just, just as a quick, quick mention of the book, right. To sort of tie it in, I think there's something like 60 little chapters and it's not just about engineers and scientists, but there's plenty of stuff on, on artists and architects. Oh, and, no, it's a great book. And, and a lot of women, you know, that have, transformed our world as, as well as men um but the common there's some common threads that kind of run through it right and one of them is is that people people do the work right people put the time in to do the work to to find and follow their passion um and 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 it's 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 not easy right every everybody who has succeeded has had to put the time in and, and grind away and continue despite a lot of difficulty and criticism, like we talked about earlier. And the case in point was Steve Vai, a dozen hours a day, oftentimes for years, for years practicing the guitar. Right. So, um, yeah. Well, um, I mean, you know, it's, it's the, I think in a theme I've talked about on this show for the past seven years that has really kind of emerged um, when you talk about pursuing significance and, and what significance means. It's subjective. It's kind of like success. But I like the word su significance over success because success isn't as meaningful, I think, as significance. And what does a significant life look like? And it is to me, it, significance is pursuing the things you talk about in the book, the thing you talk about in your TEDx talk is tapping into that in believing that you are born a creative genius and tapping into that creative side because we all, the, the reality is we all want to know that we were here and that we mattered and we want, all want to do something significant. Right. And, well, we all, we, and, and, and not to catch up, but, but we all do matter. And it's not, it's not because of position. Right. And it's, not, it's not because of title. Um, we all impact people that we come in contact with every day. I mean, I've had, People and we'll go back to the example you gave Larry David. There's a stadium of I don't know what it holds sixty some thousand people, right? And probably ninety nine percent of them are all very positive. And there's one person who yells out something, uh, you know, hurtful and negative, and it has a big impact on someone. So you you never know how how your interaction with another person is going to impact them, but 
it, you know, if it's positive, it, it can only do good things. If it's negative, it, it can only do a negative thing. So, That's a great point. I mean, I think to realize the, the power of influence <clears throat> and how much you're, I mean, you're influencing people, whether you're trying or not. And so think of the impact you can have if you were very intentional about it, right? Because, I mean, I've had friends, and I've even gone up to old school teachers. You know, I'm friends with one of my, uh, still friends with one of a, a very impactful teacher of mine in, in high school, and he just retired. And we were talking about this one time, and he says, man, you know, he taught for 30 plus years. And he said, I have, I've had, can't tell you how many people have come up to me and said, man, I remember that time you sat me down and talked to me about this and that and said this and you believed in me and, and he and the kid will walk away or the person will walk away and he's like i i don't remember who that was and sure I and i don't remember having that conversation i've done that with my right. kids where my kids have come and said remember that time we were sitting there and, and baking cookies and you told me this and i'm kind of nodding my head and i don't remember but it, for whatever reason it was important to them right and it right it, it was significant for them so that's right. that's the power of what you're talking about, the influence. And, and man, it's almost kind of scary. It's almost like having a superpower. It's a superpower. And and it goes the other way. Yeah, it certainly can. You you can say something to someone that is that is, you know, just mean and 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 spiteful. And you can say it in passing to someone you don't even know that cuts you off or and and it can do a lot of harm to someone because you don't know what's going on in someone's life. And it's, it's, it's very important to set yourself uh, to always, always making, you know, positive, positive uh, contributions to people because it all, it all lands somewhere. Uh, You're either inflicting uh, a small cut or you're applying a bandaid or something. So, um, yeah, don't don't be the don't be the person out there p- putting more negativity in the world. It it all has an impact. Hey, we're about halfway through the conversation, but I wanted to take the time to talk about my good friends, the sponsor here of this special series at Equity Bank. Have you ever noticed that most business bankers seem to really understand just one thing? It's banking, right? And not a lot about business. It makes sense since most banks were built generations ago and now they're often run by caretakers, not business builders. Well, it's not the case here at Equity Bank. The bankers at Equity Bank didn't inherit a bank generations ago. They built one of their own. They know that building something takes expertise, vision, and hard work. And over the past decade, they built one of the region's fastest growing banks by working side by side with customers, with entrepreneurs, with leaders in communities all throughout Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, and Oklahoma. Recently, Equity Bank was listed on the NASDAQ exchange, which gives them even greater capabilities to take on those big deals that growing businesses need to keep on growing. So if you're tired of talking to bankers who've never really ran or owned or built a business, then I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised when you talk to my friends at Equity Bank. Thanks for listening to this show. Let's get back to the conversation, this unique and special series on leadership and entrepreneurship brought to you by my friends at Equity Bank. It's about how you, you, I mean, why do you do this? <clears throat> why did, how did you fall into this? And first of all, what do you think your purpose is? And, and why are you, why the book? Why the talks? Why are you so passionate about this? Well, I've, I'm going to be 62 years old. I, I mean, I've worked a long time. Um, and I've, I've, I've worked with some really, really great, wonderful, inspiring people. Um, just some great people. I've also worked with some really, really bad people. Um, I've had some great jobs and I've had some really bad jobs, right? Like, like all of us. Um, And it just became increasingly apparent to me that everybody has a choice, right? How you want to go through the world. And um, I mean, I just over time decided I wanted to go through the world, um, the way I am, you know, trying, try, trying to, trying to have a positive impact on things and trying to share the little bit I know and, and making a contribution. I mean, you know, we're all, we're all influenced by the people around us, right? Jim Rohn, the 
famous speaker and said, you know, you're the average of the five pers- right. five people you spend the most time with, right? So you, you have to kind of pick and choose who you want to spend time with. I was lucky. I, I, you know, I had great parents and uh, good friends. Uh, but, you know, you get out in the world and it, it, it kicks you around and and you, you learn a lot, right? You learn what's good and you learn what's bad. And then you make your make your own decisions about, about who you want to be. There's a great quote by um, Emerson, Ralph Waldo Emerson, one of the transcendentalists. And he said, the only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. So, you know, I've, I've always loved Emerson and Thoreau. I remember talking about school I, you know, as a kid. I remember being in grade school and a teacher introduced me to Thoreau. And it just, it really hit me, you know, so I, ever since then I've been, you know, reading it. And, and so you just have to decide what kind of person do you want to be? You know, who do you want to be? And then start acting and educating yourself to, to get there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I agree 100%. I think it's, I don't know if this is just because of the byproduct of, of my age, um, but I hear what you're saying. I mean, you get a certain amount of life stink on you and the wisdom starts to come in obviously through, through experience and through age. And you feel like you need to give back something. I think in large part, that's why I do this show too. It's helped me. Yeah. I mean, the show is probably, I think I say this all the time. I'm like, who's, you know, all, all these talking to 400 people, people has had an impact on me, probably benefited me more. Of course. Than it has the, the listeners of this show. And it's in large part why I do it because I'm continuing to learn and, and t- continuing to improve. And I'm sure you're the same way, right? And you're 60, approaching 62. You probably every year you're like, I, I, there's so much I don't know, right? I mean, you're, it, it, as I get older, I realize how much I don't know, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> exactly. And and you know, that's the other thing to point out. There is there are so many resources to to learn, right? There's books. There's podcasts, there's oh, YouTube, so there's Udemy, you know, all those online courses, Udacity and Coursera. And some of the stuff is like $8, $10 for a, for a six hour course taught by a professor. I mean, there's no excuse for not continually improving, right? There's a million books in the library uh, and, and they're all free. You know, my library lets you take out 50 books at one time if you can yeah, imagine it, that i mean it's so, amazing when you think about it i, I saw um pen Gillette, you know the the yeah illusionist magician i write about them in the book yeah and he talked about i listened to him talking to joe rogan on a podcast and you know and yeah. it's so easy to, to to look and go man thing and it's it is weird in one dichotomy there's the, the information flow is so abundant and so overflowing but yet we seem to be getting dumber in a lot of sense. But then Pendulette said, well, think about this, though. He goes, you could pick up – there's one – you could pick up a, a New York Times newspaper or yeah. read it online and one article about genetic coding and genetic engineering. And you could learn more in that one article than someone in the 16th century would ever learn in an entire lifetime. You know, and, you, and it's true when you think about it, right? The knowledge that you would get from that one article you know, surpasses a lifetime of knowledge of the average – you know, 35 year old in, in, in the 1400s. It's amazing. And, and, and if you're not interested in genetic engineering, you're interested in something else. So go find that and go and go read and learn about it. Right. But, but uh, yeah, that's, and, and it's, it's habitual, right? Once you get started and you find something that resonates with you, something you're interested in uh, you want more of it. Right. I think, I think, it's important just to get started. Find find what you like. It it could be painting. I mean, it could be who knows what it is, right? It could be running. It could be, but find it and and uh, uh, learn more about it and practice it. Well, and I think the big challenge you talk a lot about this. Uh, and I know it's it, in, in learning from the, and that's one of the great things about learning from people who have done it. There's still that that moment of taking that first leap. I mean, it's it can be so overwhelming. As where you're sitting, you're looking at your situation and where you want to go or what you want to do or whatever idea you want to put forth into creation, the chasm can seem so vast. And so that just in itself typically produces a tremendous amount of stagnation. Right? Yeah. And so how do yeah. you take that? What, what, what do you do? What do you suggest? <laughs> I mean, you've, you've learned a lot. You see from a lot of these people and even yourself, how do you take that first leap? 
Well, you... I, so, you know, we, we mentioned the term superpower earlier. So I think everybody truly, and actually this is, I think, one of the chapters in the book, but I, I joking, jokingly call it a superpower, but it, there's, it's really, it's really the way it is. I mean, everybody's got a superpower, right? And, yeah. and, and the superpower is uh, the, the, the power of how small micro improvements add up over time. Yeah, the and, compounding and effect of it, for com- sure. I mean, it's amazing, right? So I, I don't know why, but I always think of, I, I don't know why, but I always think of of, of using a, a carton of blueberries as an example. And I imagine having 100 blueberries in there, right, in a carton, and having another one right next to it with 101. And you would not tell the difference. I mean, you just couldn't tell. You, right. I wouldn't even pick it up, right? Right. But if you, if you, that's just 1%, but if you change by 1% a day, which again is inconsequential, you can't even tell the difference in just one year, you will have a <laughs> hundred cartons of blueberries starting yeah. from that one, just by adding one more blueberry, you know, th- the very next day, right? 1%. You keep adding 1%, it'll be 3,700 cartons yeah. in a year. So that is a superpower. So yeah, if you stand at the beginning and you think, man, I, there's no way I can do all this. And that's, that's true. You can't get there instantly. Right. But I mean, and, and in many ways the world is in conspiracy against us because it, it, it holds out these, these um, goals and we want to be instantly gratified, but, but, you can't get instant gratification. I mean, you can't get there from here in a day, right? It takes it takes years and years. Well, that's uh, that's the key, right? I think, and it's not the, and what I've found is that you just start. I, you know, Stephen, I'm a big fan of Stephen Pressfield, and he talks about. I don't know if you've read any about any of his stuff, but um, I've read all his books. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just you know when he talks about the, you know the War of Art, same thing. Right? It's like you just the resistance, and particularly if it's so important to you, whatever you're trying to believe and achieve is so important to you uh, the the angels the muse the universe has put this on your heart and and you're sh- you sh- i love how he says you're shaming the universe if you don't do it right. right but it will try to stop you and to me that was eye-opening because oh you mean those dragons are always going to be there yeah right so okay right. well let's let's stop worrying about dragons and let's just start focus on becoming a really good dragon slayer and, yeah, and, and the right. professional knows that they're always going to be there. And we, right. And that and that stuff's also echoed in his book, which is a wonderful book, Turning Pro. Yeah, Turning Pro. Yep. Yeah. Another wonderful book. Right. So yeah, it's it's always going to be difficult. It's always going to be work. There's always going to be setbacks. Um, and it always begins with the first step, right? And and the next day you'll look back. And you won't be <laughs> your your destination will not look any closer uh, than when you started, uh, and you'll probably likely have a lot of scratches on you from your from your first day of trekking and work. But keep at it because because you'll get there, right? And it goes back to the other right thing that Steve Jobs popularized, and it's been said many many times before him. But you know, the journey is the reward, right? So well, that's what I was going to get to is that. Y- y- as you start doing it, you, you realize that initially when you were at station zero and looking at what you wanted to accomplish, <clears throat> when the when you start getting into it and you start, you know, it's kind of like you and I were talking about running and I know you're an avid runner. And I was talking about how at the six in the pre-recording, the six week window for me, once I got past six weeks, then it became like an addiction. And so it's almost like you cry when you start doing it and you start to enjoy the journey. It becomes less about the destination. You just enjoy the, the process of what's going on. That, that happens in almost everything that I've done too is like I just start doing, start doing it, starts compounding. And then a year, a year and a half later, I realize I crossed the initial threshold that seems so far away and it was almost like a non-event. Does that make sense? That, that's what's wonderfully said. And, and, and let me apply that to, to work, right, and to people's careers. Um, the, the the technology luminary Kevin Kelly, who's who's just a great guy, a founder of Wired Magazine, and someone that I I quite like, and um, he said we were we will all be newbies forever, right? right. So so 
you realize at some point that you're never going to get there wherever there is. You're, you're really never going to get there. And it really is about enjoying the journey. And you will always be working. You will always be struggling. And you'll always be a newbie, meaning you'll always be learning new things. You'll always have discomfort. You'll always be making mistakes, right? But that's life. Yeah. And, and embrace it and enjoy it because that, that's what it's like to, to live and to grow. Yeah, that's what you was know, talking about, even that, that teacher that I had, that mentor that passed away teaching me, you know, helping with my speeches. She talked about that and she told me, she was the first person that told me that the fear and uncertainty never goes away. And and she said it with this beaming smile. And I remember I was getting ready to go on stage and she goes, how do you feel? She goes, you feel nervous? And my initial instinct was, no, no, I got this covered. And she goes, are you, you're nervous, right? And I'm like, yeah, I'm about to puke. She's like, (laughs) She and, she and she got this big smile on her face. She goes, doesn't it feel great to feel alive? That's what she yeah. said right before I went on stage. But it's true, yeah. right? I mean, that's – it's kind of like Henry Fonda used to puke before, you know, up until he's, his last performances. He'd go on stage or start a scene. He'd throw up, right? Because right. it was so important to him. Yeah, yeah. Well, we all we all get better with and, – and that's what this is about, right? That's what the leadership is – your podcast is about. Um, and and much of what we talked about today has been has been really leading leading yourself, right? Uh, so, yeah, just get get comfortable with being uncomfortable, and uh, and continue moving forward, taking one step at a time. And uh, yeah, I like how you said you know getting comfortable being uncomfortable. I I've, we've we've broached this theme a lot on the show, and and it's kind of been an, an aha moment for me over the last ten years. Is like that's just the part of the process, right? That's the price of admission. I like to say towards significance, right? Is the, is that constant gnawing or that fear and uncertainty is actually a blessing and a gift. It's like even Pressfield talks about, that's the barometer of probably what you should be focusing on. Right? If, if you're feeling that, you know, you're probably heading in the right direction. Yeah. I, I just watched the documentary on, uh, I forget, it might have been Netflix, but it was on Clive Davis, the the record producer who yeah. is responsible for just introducing to the world so many one. brilliant artists. Yeah, yeah, from Janis Joplin, yep. and Springsteen, and uh, uh, Whitney Houston. I mean, just, just truly countless people. I mean, Kenny G, even people outside yep. of, of, of what would be a typical genre. And he is driven, and this is a gentleman who is profoundly wealthy and he is in his mid eighties. Yep. If not a little older by now. And he is still in the studio at one and two in the morning, overseeing how things are being mixed. And he he is driven. He says really by fear because he knows how, how, short life is and he knows how um how you know it's it it it, it can be very tentative um and things can be taken away so he always just wants to put the work in and he always wants to prove himself right and in in a sense to me it made me think he he always sees himself as you know a newbie he's always out there trying to discover the next the next talent, the next genre. Um, and that's just a great way to live. I, I, I want to just mention one thing in closing here. I know, I know we're probably going to have to wrap it up, but I, I had the privilege of working for a gentleman who started a business when he was 55 years old. And he worked very, very hard to, to grow this business. And it was very low, very slow growing for a while for, for many, many years and you know, for decades. Uh, but eventually it was very successful. Um, and he was worth a lot of money. He was in his mid eighties, uh, but he had the vibrancy of, of, I don't know, of someone in their twenties. We used to, he, he had a private jet and we'd fly to different meetings here and there. And, and sometimes we'd fly not on a private jet, but we'd we'd have to take 
fly commercially over to the Middle East or India or somewhere. And we'd be there with, all, with just packed with meetings and we'd come back after a few days and uh, we'd land in New York at, I don't know, it might've been like four in the morning or something. And it's a, it's just a long, long trip. And you know, I was exhausted. Um, he would go home and shower and be the first person in the office. He, he was chairman of the company. Right. He'd be the first person in his office sitting at his desk at six in the morning after being up for, you know, 17, 18 hours <laughs> and as happy as ever. Right. And that is a great example of how I want to be. I don't, you know, I don't really believe in retiring. You know, I don't really want to retire. It, it doesn't mean I won't want to maybe do something different, but I'll always want to keep working. And I hope I will always be curious and I hope I will always have a beginner's mind uh, and I hope I'll always be learning. And that was certainly the example uh, that I saw with, with this gentleman who is a chairman of this uh, company. He's since passed away. Um, he lived to be into his late 80s, very successful. Uh, and he worked up until his, his very last days. Not to say that he didn't enjoy life and have a wonderful family. Um, he truly lived life, but he was always making a contribution. And I feel fortunate to have worked for him. Uh, and by the way, he was a very demanding, tough person to work for. But I learned a lot from that, too. I so. love I love it when you come across. I, yeah, I, I, I love you know, when you come across those types of examples and I've, I've had a few of those myself and, um, someone that is truly living life because of their insatiable curiosity, their optimism, their positivity. Um, yeah, demanding, but at the same time it's demanding for a reason. It's not demanding for an ego. I, I know exactly what you're talking about and I love how I'm with you. You said something really resonated. I mean, I think that's where particularly as I've entered my fifties and, you know, I'm 10 years behind you, but this show has kind of shown in me that, wow, if, if there's any re fear or regret that I have, it's the fear of not a, it's the fear of regret, right? Regretting that I didn't try this, or I didn't, you know, follow that curiosity path, right? If I, something is making me curious that go see what, where that leads you, right? And just keep trying things and keep doing things. But most importantly, keep contributing, right? Keep adding value uh, to the universe, to the planet. And I think that's, right, that's right. what's driving me and not for ego, but just because I just, it feels like I'm running out of, and we are, I mean, and that's, a, I'm running we out are. of time right? <laughs> yeah. and so I don't that, know how long I'm going to be here. Right. We are, we are. And listen, it, and it goes back to what we said about, um, uh, you know, keep contributing. And that goes back to the conversation we had about just being kind and considerate with your comments because you never know how they're going to exactly. impact somebody. Um, my dad, who is uh, going to be 88 years old, he's, he lives with, uh, with us and, and uh, he's a great guy. Uh, you know, love him. He, he was actually the, the best man at my wedding uh, 37 some years ago. Um, and so a, gr a great guy. My, my mom, you know, passed away a number of decades ago after a long battle with cancer. Um, my dad lives with us now, as I said, but, but it's funny because he's a great guy. Uh, but it's like living with the ghost. Jokingly, I say it's like living with the ghost of Christmas future, <laughs> Chris, <laughs> <Right>. Christmas future, <laughs> because, because, you know, as much as you love your parents, right. You don't necessarily want to be exactly like them. Right. So. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it's a good reminder. And, and it's funny because I, I can think back about things that just happened a little while ago, it seems, but in reality, they were say 25 years ago. Yeah. Right. Okay. So in that short amount of time going ahead, I will be my dad's. Age. I know I do that all the time. Right. And it's humbling. So, yeah. Very humbling. So, so back to your point, Richard, life is short, you know, get after it, live it. Make make positive contributions, you know, and uh, and and uh, keep learning. Right. And by the way, you don't need to have have worked for a guy like I did to, to have that uh, benefit. Today, you can read about people. Oh, there's you know, plenty, and just, of examples, and just apply. plenty of yeah. examples. So, well, and that, and that's why the, we, I know we didn't talk a lot about your book, but it that is a great plug for your book because it is chock full of 
those real life examples, those real life stories. I love lists. I mean, and every chapter's got here's the top ten things that this person thinks about this or how to improve. I mean, there's just it's just it's it's not a uh, a linear textbook. It's like almost a book I can just pull up and I'm like, I need to get a little bit of inspiration. I, I can find something somewhere. Well, I'm very fortunate. I had I had a friend, someone I I I admired more than more than I could say. Uh, and I just, I love this person. It's John Scully from, um, uh, you know, the, the, the businessman and entrepreneur and, and investor, um, formerly head of Apple and PepsiCo and many other companies, but he, he wrote the forward for me. And, um, and it's very kind uh, what he said, but he, he did say that he, that he loves the book. He said, you know, many, many books end up being on a bookshelf, but Evolve or die should be very near where you work. He said, I keep going back to it. I love to randomly open it up to any page and read a few pages, often several times a week. It's a fun experience and very stimulating for anyone with big curiosity. And John is a person with big curiosity. He has he has championed uh, the emergence of a great many technologies that have that have changed and transformed our world for the better. Uh, so he's another person that we can all look up to uh, as someone who's set an example of, of how to live and how to contribute. Well, I agree with 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 what Mr. Scully said. I mean, it's it's one of those, and I'm I'm an insatiably curious guy. I've always have been, and it is one of those books I can see that. I'm like, oh, I'm curious. I just kept wanting to go find more and dig. And um, I think it's a great book, and it's a great you know, evolve or die. Evolve or die is the name of the book. We'll have links to that um, and how you can find that on yeah. this post. And and uh, John, I mean Tom, you said that you had in the beginning that you were, were had an offer, particularly for these listeners. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. For the and by the way, Richard, I really enjoy Dose of Leadership. I mean, I've been listening to it for some time. Uh, I listen to it while I run. Uh, so so, thank you very much for uh, for all the work you do. I guess you've had, I mean, several hundred podcasts. That's yeah, that's I'm, I'm, I'm almost. I, I've had over 400 conversations, not all or dose of leadership. I've had some. I had another podcast for a while too that kind of an offshoot or a sub sub podcast. But yeah, it's 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 amazing that I've had 400 conversations. Th- and thank you for the kind words. I'll send you the the check in the mail. After we get oh no, I love it. I, <laughs> no, I, I, I should, I I should send you that. the check because you I tell you, you, you have kept me company. I feel like I know you actually quite well. Um uh, and I certainly learned a lot about your guests and learned a lot from them. But again, I listen to it when I'm running all the time. So so uh uh you, actually you might have tripped me up on a on the trail a couple of times. You might be responsible for a couple of my um, <laughs> well I can I hold no <laughs> <laughs> no liability or any injury that you may occur from listening to yeah. my show. <laughs> yeah. Or, or it could have just been my, uh, my, my terrible uh, running form or something. Um, hey, so if, if anyone is interested, um, I have a, a manifesto really on, on innovation and creativity and it's called you are being called. And it originated because People, at least I and some of my friends, like we we feel this slight, very subtle bit of angst um, or, or anxiousness in the world, right? And and what we come to realize is that that's that's really the the, the world's way, the universe's way of sort of inviting us to step up and and make a mark to to become more. So I wrote a manifesto. It's called A Call to Innovate. It's 52 pages. It's honestly mostly just really beautiful pictures and, 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 and some text. Um, and I'll give that to everybody for free. It's a, it's a really nice PDF uh, that people can have. Um, and I also have another book that I'll give them, a real book by a famous author. I don't want to mention it, but believe me, it's someone Actually, we we mentioned on our podcast. I have permission to, to to give the folks, so I'll include that. I'll send it out like a, a, a couple of weeks down the road. But if they subscribe, all they do is just text the word "evolve" e v o l v e, um, and I know I'm spelling that right because I'm I'm reading it from the cover of the book. But uh, so just text "evolve" to four 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 nine nine nine. That's easy to remember. 
text evolve yeah. to 444999. Yeah, and then they'll get that 52 page uh, manifesto, the call to innovate email to them. And, uh, and then they'll also get this major book by this major author uh, for free also. Man, what a generous author. I didn't have anybody give anything uh, quite that valuable for free. So I, I appreciate that, Tom. And I guess uh, tell people how they can connect with you on your website. Yeah, well, uh, my name is pretty easy to remember, um, Tom Triumph, and just TomTriumph.com. I love hearing from folks, and I'm happy to, um, you know, engage with anybody that wants to wants to reach out. Um, and uh, once again, thank you, Richard, for the effort and putting these on. And and I do want to thank the listener for for listening. Um, I am someone who has had a lot of different jobs and. Uh, you know, yeah, I've had some even... successes and some, and, and, and quite a few struggles too. So I, I understand, uh, you know, what, what folks are living out there trying to, trying to make the world a better place. So. Well, I'd love to have you back. We barely scratched the surface. You're right. You, your life is fully rich. We didn't even talk about all the things that you, you have done. I didn't get into really your past. We talked about a lot of the concepts that are near and dear to my heart and to my listeners on this show. Um, I hope people do check you out, Tom. I mean, I'll have links to your very inspiring uh, TED Talk on this post. You can go directly to doseofleadership.com and look up Tom's episode. Links to his website, uh, a link to and instructions for the text to Evolve 444999. All of that will be on there. Um, I do think you're one of the good ones, Tom. Uh, you're one of those that makes all of us think about our life, our career, how to be the best and everything that we do. And yeah. I do appreciate what you're doing for the universe. And I appreciate you coming on the show. And if anybody wants to just go check out the, the TEDx talk, um, it's, it's titled uh, the, um, the innovation of you. Yeah, the innovation of and you. There, don't skip ahead, but there's a surprise guest who joins me the last couple minutes on stage, but, but to let it build. <laughs> don't skip ahead. Yeah. So, and like yeah, I said, I'll TEDx, have, the innovation of you. And I'll have that on there as well on, oh, cool. on my website. So I'll have that a links to all of that if you go to Dose of Leadership as well. So uh, Tom, again, one of the good ones. Thanks for coming on the show. All right, man. Peace to you. And uh, thank you. All right, brother. Goodbye. Hey, thanks for listening to this special entrepreneur series of Dose of Leadership brought to you by Equity Bank. A special episode, a great one to kick off 2020. Tom Triumph was just fascinating. He's outstanding and he's so generous. Again, you can get a 52-page four-color ebook from Tom Triumph. It's called The Call to Innovate. It's $10 on Amazon. You can text EVOLVE to 444-999 and receive this free 52-page four-color ebook. It's outstanding. What a great gift. And you get a bonus book. A bonus book by one of my favorite authors. If you're really interested, you're not going to be disappointed. Text EVOLVE to 444-999 and receive these two generous bonus gifts from this great outstanding guest, Tom Trine. Thanks for tuning to Dose of Leadership. Find out more at doseofleadership.com. Reach out to me if you're looking for a speaker, a coach, or any type of leadership training. I'd be more than happy to talk to all of you. Again, thanks so much for tuning in to Dose of Leadership.